Welcome to the five keys to passion, where you will learn to transform negative behavior in your love life and create enriching relationships. So this is what happens when the strongest contact to Mars, which represents passion and drive, is from Neptune. Uh, so imagine you're with somebody who has a Mars-Neptune aspect. Um, how do they act? First of all, they're, they're really magical. You know, they're, they're creative, they're imaginative, socially idealistic. They're not a sort of competitive types at all. Um, uh, they have weaknesses. You know, it's like uh, maybe they drink too much or you know, have some substance abuse. Or, uh, and they really have this kind of dream of um, some kind of magical sexual fulfillment. It's like a, an ideal. So the ideal is more perfect than, than the reality for them. Uh, so that can actually lead to sort of faking it uh, sexually and, and that kind of thing. Or you do, you have sex because, uh, you know, you think it'll make the other person happy. Um, and sometimes these people, Mars Neptune people, have a reputation for being unfaithful. It depends, like, what generation it is. But um, uh, it's like they're still longing for something uh, you know, which the person in question uh, doesn't fulfill. You don't fulfill. You know. um, so um, women with this kind of aspect uh, often go for men that they think they can save in some way or another. So so there's a kind of thing with disappointed expectations, which is not much fun if you're relating to this person. So why do they act like that? Uh, one of the reasons is like this... There's a sort of over-idealization of male figures in childhood and, and subsequent disappointment. Uh, so they kind of get initiated, you know, parents overshare, uh, uh, you know, so they kind of get initiate, initiated into weakness. They're kind of attracted by weakness and want to help. Um, uh, also, it's possible that, you know, the pair, somebody... In, the family life, parents, where there was sort of unfaithfulness or something. So there's a kind of, you know, lack of strong will, you could say. Um, so what do you do about this if you like the person you're with? You know, you, um, you may feel, for example, that you're a disappointment to them. Uh, and you may also get kind of drawn into behavior which, which weakens you. You know, you might start drinking too much or anything like that. Um, um, you can also get the sort of feeling that, that they kind of weave a, a, a sort of reality which uh, which um, isn't really true. So, um, and they're also kind of evasive, you know, they might be evasive when you try and, you know, get to the the, the, the core of the matter. So, so you've got to confront this evasion before it gets too bad, you know, and you have to kind of uh, lay down some rules. Uh, about what's acceptable, what's not. You know, one bottle of wine may be acceptable, two not. Um, and and also, you know, you don't want to believe everything that you're presented with. You want to check, check the facts, make sure that these people know that you, you know, want a really honest relationship. But, you know, Mars, Neptune and your partner, it brings inspiration and magic, sometimes a great spirituality, uh, just as long as the person's moral compass is uh, attuned. So what do you do if you have Mars Neptune? You know, what's, uh, what are you, uh, how do you affect relationship? Well, often you'll initiate a relationship with magical expectations. Uh, you'll see the great qualities of somebody who may not possess them. Uh, you hate routine, you know, so you want something magic and seductive. You're longing for uh, transcendental sexual experience. Uh, uh, which can mean when you're having sex, you, you fantasize about other sexual partners. Um, yeah, there's a sort of inauthenticity uh, uh, about your, your sexual needs. What you actually need is, is a kind of spiritual connection. You need a spiritual connection when uh, you have sex. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. Everything else doesn't work. You might try everything else, but it doesn't work. Uh, you also might... Uh, judge your partner as weak or wimpy or unhappy. Uh, and the reason uh, you might act like this is because, you know, um, you experience weakness in the people that you're related to, to as a child, the male figures. 
uh, or you, you felt you had to help them out in a kind of impossible situations, or there may have been some early exposure to a sexualized experience. So what do you do? If you're a woman, don't over-idealize the man. You know, you just get disappointed. He's a great musician. No, he, he doesn't help in the kitchen. You know, you, you, you have to keep your expectations realistic. Don't fake. Don't have sex when you don't want it. Uh, don't kid yourself that the man is weak. Uh, you're uh, uh, very good at, at spotting weaknesses. Or the woman, you know, you're very good at spotting weaknesses. Uh, and if you're a man, you know, the perfect sex, it, it's an illusion. Uh, you can spiritualize your sex with Tantra and stuff like that. Uh, but basically, you shouldn't fantasize and, you know, uh, you shouldn't be unfaithful. Um, it's the soul con contact that you want. So when you're conscious of this kind of behavior, uh, you can learn to transform these negative things and, and attain uh, uh, transcendency, uh, spirituality and, and meaning in your life.